So thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm going to talk a bit today about uh, Sage's new uh, open source rejected article tracker. Um, we're going to start by setting the scene um, a bit to say, you know, what is rejected article tracking and why do we do it? Um, a bit about what we've learned from doing it and also uh, how to track your rejected articles with um, our software. So I think we all know this story. Um, an author writes a paper, they send it to a journal and sadly, much of the time that paper gets rejected. So the author can then submit the paper to another journal and it might get rejected again, but eventually that paper can go to a publisher who will accept it. And then the paper will be published and it will be registered with Crossref. So at this stage, other publishers who have considered the paper can search Crossref and find the um, article that they have rejected um, simply by searching title and authors, for example. Um, and this is essentially the process that our software automates. It's just a simple search of Crossref, but what we've added to it is an automated selection of the correct result from the search results that Crossref gives back. So this means the whole process can be completely automated. Um, so why would we want to track rejected articles? Well, I think the first and most obvious reason is simply to understand the peer review system better because it's not really a system. It's just a thing that we say. Um, getting feedback on our own peer review services um, so we can learn to do those better. Um, and lastly, it turns out that rejected article tracking is quite a good way of uh, identifying cases of misconduct. So everything that happens in publishing, in journal publishing, happens in the context of this, which is the rate of growth of journal article DOIs in Crossref. You can see that in 2019, something like 4 million DOIs were registered, um, and most of those will represent actual research articles. What's missing here is the rejected articles. It's all the other articles that were written that, that year that weren't published. Um, the peer review process is burdensome on researchers and on uh, peer review services that, that publishers provide. And understanding that and understanding the, the missing part of this picture is very important. So what have we learned? Well, I think the most interesting thing is actually just that most rejected articles do get published, which raises some interesting questions in itself. Um, sometimes even in high impact journals. Um, we take a look at this um, graph here. The, the x-axis is showing you the uh, number of days um, between an article being rejected and then being published somewhere else. But you can see that at the extremes, some articles go years between being rejected and being published somewhere else. Uh, could be that's up to about five years there. And also some articles get rejected and then go on to be very well, very highly cited. Um, these are citations on the y-axis, according to Crossref. Um, another interesting thing is just that there's a big difference in topics. So biomedical research, for example, will have a much higher probability of being uh, published following rejection uh, and also a higher probability of being cited than, say, social science. Um, so we we've been able to look at misconduct in a different way with rejected articles. Um, if we take rejected articles that are later published and then retracted, uh, that's allowed us to find a few cases of research fraud that were submitted to SAGE, um, a few peer review rings as well, um, which can actually help us to sort of identify a lot of individuals who, who uh, may have uh, committed research misconduct. Um, dual submission is also very easy to spot. Um, this is another graph just showing, you know, counts of articles by the number of days between them being rejected and published elsewhere. Um, you can see that a very small number of them were published before they were rejected. So these are very obvious dual submission cases. And it's a small number of cases, but they're very easy to identify. 
So how to track your rejected articles? Well, we have a Python package. So if you're a Python user, very straightforward to um, get a hold of that and get using it. Uh, instructions are on the GitHub page. We also have a web app. I will share the link because it's quite long and I hope none of you are trying to frantically type that out right now. Um, and there's also a few uh, posts about rejected article tracking on my blog, which you, you're also very welcome to check out. Uh, so yeah, any questions, please feel free to reach out to me in the chat or at the contact details here.